Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Wine Down Wednesdays, the place where we meet up, we relax, and we talk about real life situations. Today on Wine Down Wednesdays, we are going to be talking about three topics that I feel all connect to each other. And the topics are going to be, we can call it the three T's, and it's going to be triggers, trauma, and therapy. I feel like this topic is very important because these three topics are topics that get pushed under the rug often. Let's face it, you didn't grow up. Well, let me just, let me speak for myself because I'm not sure how you guys grew up. I didn't grow up being able to vocalize my emotions and then say, okay, maybe you should talk to someone. Maybe you should go to therapy. And I wasn't taught that therapy was okay. Therapy was a normal part of life. So as an adult, I feel like I'm doing more work to learn myself and to better myself. And that's why I just feel like it's important to talk about it. So starting with the topic of triggers. Anything that disrupts your energy or your mind frame or brings out an emotional response from you is a trigger, right? Triggers could be many things and what is a trigger for one person may not be a trigger for another person. I can share some of my triggers and if you know me you may know these triggers and if you don't this is of course the place to get to know each other so then you will know my triggers. My number one trigger is being screamed at or yelled at. My mom, I love you mom, but my mom had the tendency to scream or yell when I was growing up and it could be over the littlest thing. Wash the dishes, clean the house, do your homework, whatever. She had to yell. And as an adult, I feel like I knew this as a child, but I couldn't speak on it. But as an adult, I really realized that screaming does not help you get your point across. And again, in my adult age, someone screaming at me or yelling at me is a trigger. And I will shut down completely. So a trigger for me is being yelled at. Another trigger for me is being lied to because I feel like I'm such a genuine person and I don't like for people to play in my face. So if you lie to me or lie on me, that's a trigger for me. And again, my responses to triggers are to shut down. As I'm doing the work on myself, I'm learning to address my triggers and just simply say like, that's not cool or I'm not accepting that. Other triggers could be anything depending on your environment and where you grew up at maybe people fighting is a trigger for you like seeing people fight that could be a trigger right you was in a car accident before and you see a car crash maybe that could trigger some type of emotion for you again triggers are different for everybody because we don't have the same life experiences i would say it's very important to at least be able to identify your triggers so you can work on them i also pulled out some examples of triggers So like I mentioned, holiday or anniversary of a trauma or a loss. Sounds, sights, smells, or tastes could be related to a trauma. Loud voices or yelling. Arguments. Being ridiculed or judged. Being alone. Getting rejected. Those are some of some people's triggers. Next up, I want to talk about trauma because I feel like triggers come from trauma. Again, I mentioned being screamed at as a child or just my mom yelling in general, right? So although someone else may not think being yelled at is traumatic, to me, that was a childhood trauma. And some other traumas for people could be a friend of someone's death, someone's passing. That can be a trauma. So when the anniversary comes up of their death or their birthday or a certain holiday, if maybe they need, maybe if it's like Thanksgiving and they used to cook a certain dish, that can be a trauma. That can be a trauma and you can be triggered by that holiday or by that date, right? So you get why I'm saying that they go hand in hand, triggers and traumas. Okay. Another trauma could be maybe something that happened to you physically. I had two surgeries on my Achilles. That's a trauma for me. So I'm triggered by that trauma. 
if I see somebody with crutches, if I see somebody in a wheelchair, if I see somebody with a walker or a walking boot, that's a trigger for me because I immediately go back to my surgery. And it's not that I'm purposely like, oh, let me sink into my thoughts and let me think about surgery. It just happens. So that's a trigger for me, you know? Trauma, everyone, like I think I mentioned this earlier in the video, everybody responds to trauma differently. I know they categorize it in four categories. They have flight, they have fight, freeze, and fawn. So here it says, if you take the method of flight to respond to your trauma, that could be being a workaholic, right? And I say this was one of my trauma responses in 2020 during the pandemic. I lost someone very close to me. I lost my aunt. I um, was in the midst of a breakup. I was also dealing with work drama, of course, transitioning to working from home. And I was also, like everyone else, living in the middle of a pandemic. So my response was flight and I was a workaholic. I picked up a second job towards the end of the year of 2020 and it's because I didn't want to think about nothing and I didn't want to be present in the moment because I felt like the more I would do the less I would have to think about reality so flight was a trauma response for me I was a workaholic I worked all day every day so I got home I just needed to sleep some other flight categories are being an overthinker anxiety panic difficulty sitting still and perfectionist I am also a overthinker anxious and I'm a perfectionist they also have fights fight is of course if you're angry if you're having outbursts if you're controlling if you're being a bully if you're being a narcissist explosive those are like your fight trauma responses freeze could be you isolate yourself you feel numb you disassociate from people fawn you are a people pleaser you lack your own identity you have no boundaries and you become overwhelmed or codependent those are the four categories that they have for trauma responses. And lastly, as I mentioned, I just want to talk about therapy because I feel like a way to handle triggers and trauma, of course, as I always say, pray to God. God is God knows everything. Before you even bring it to him in prayer, he knows what's, he knows what's going on. But I still say pray to God. That's always number 1 no matter what you have going on. Secondly, I would say therapy is very 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 crucial but it's not talked about in our community therapy is sometimes frowned upon and it is not something that is mentioned as an outlet for you to work on yourself or to heal or to have someone to talk to that does not know what's going on we have reached the last portion of this episode of wind down wednesdays and this last portion we are going to be talking about Therapy. 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 I feel like the purpose of therapy is not to fix you, it's not to heal you, it's not to make everything better. I feel like therapy is a resource or a tool that is there to help you manage your challenges that you may be going through or some things that you may be dealing with. And I think people really need to stop the narrative that therapy does not mean you're crazy. Therapy is actually courageous. I look at it as you taking the step to be a better you. And I always speak on how you can't pour into others if you do not pour into yourself. So I feel like therapy is a big step that people can take to pour into themselves and to make themselves better. Number one, for yourself, because I don't care what you got going on. Unless it's your child, you should always put yourself first. And secondly, so you could be better for people, you know, because at the end of the day, we got to interact with people, right? Whether it's our friends, our family, our co-workers, strangers, clients, whatever, whoever, we have to deal with people, right? So I feel like, again, therapy is just a place to get your mind right. Therapy can also be a safe place because this person doesn't know you from a hole in the wall. So they don't have nothing to go based off to judge you. Or they're not in your circle, so they're not going to go back and tell another friend of yours. Or they're not going to tell their friend's friends what you got going on, you know? Or even sometimes you talk to your girlfriends or you talk to whoever you talk to and at that moment they seem super supportive and you know they're giving you advice and then when you turn around they'll judge you for it they'll you know little comments wouldn't be me couldn't be me blah blah blah. but it's like we just had this conversation you were just agreeing with me and you were just giving me your input okay sis I think a big part of therapy is like going when you're ready to go I can honestly say I tried therapy a few years ago and I just went I felt like I needed to go 
I felt like I was becoming very I was letting people determine my actions like I wasn't a nasty person or a rude person but I started becoming that and it's because I didn't know how to manage I guess I can say people playing with me again I didn't fully put on the table with my therapist what I was dealing with after the pandemic I feel like again I was going through a lot of things and I felt like I felt like I was ready to speak to someone so I did it on my time and I feel like with anything and everything in life you do stuff on your time when you know it's time when you feel like okay I had enough let me do this let me make this move let me make this change yeah I was just really I was really ready to start my healing process and to start working on myself in all areas of my life and so yeah I went back to therapy I've been there since 2021 and yeah it's been great it's been good again I know people like to look at therapy people being crazy you can go to therapy for simply being overwhelmed you can go to therapy for simply being anxious you can simply go to therapy again for triggers or trauma and a lot of it is childhood trauma that you don't realize is childhood trauma when we grow up and we get when we start to have like adult conversations with people we realize that some of our communication sucks because as a child you weren't really encouraged to communicate your feelings or your thoughts you were told shut up and do this or I didn't ask you why don't ask me why and again I'm speaking from my household I don't know if you guys can agree but this is my household growing up and again I decided to go to therapy to start my healing journey <laughs> because as we all know healing is not like an overnight thing it's not a across the board I did this this one time now I'm healed no some days you're gonna have good days some days you're gonna have bad days some days you're gonna have things that trigger your healing and make you feel like hmm am I really healed I can't speak for everybody but my therapist makes me feel comfortable I don't ever feel like I'm being judged I feel like my therapist is genuine I pick up the phone and text my therapist if I had a win in my life today, if I had a loss in my life, when I got good news, like I think, oh, let me go text my therapist. You know what I mean? So that's a good relationship to have. And again, I feel like don't let no one discourage you from going to therapy. Don't let no one project their fears of therapy onto you. Do what you want to do for you, and especially in this day and age. A lot is going on in the world. A lot. A lot. So I will encourage everybody to think about therapy. And I'm not trying to sell therapy. I'm not trying to push it on nobody. But I would say it's a great tool for healing and for becoming a better person and to managing your triggers and your traumas. As always, I just want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next week on Wind Down Wednesdays.